Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be talking about everything that happens on the postnatal ward, what you would expect to see there and what you can expect to be doing yourself. So I really hope you find this useful. If you do, please make sure you hit the like button, the subscribe button and follow my midwifery Instagram account, Ella's Journey to Midwifery. So basically postnatal ward, it's pretty crazy. They are normally full, <laughs> so it's kind of all hands on deck, but it's absolutely fine. You will learn along the way, but I will just let you know from the get go that it's probably going to be quite a busy area to work in. First of all, what will happen is you'll go to the shift and you'll get a handover of all the women and the babies that are on the unit. So the handover will include information about the delivery, medical history of the woman, uh, any complications at delivery or in the pregnancy, which would mean that we need to do further things postnatally, whether the baby is a girl or boy, how much they weigh, how the feeding's going, if baby's had a poo or a wee yet. So they're just kind of things that they'll discuss at handover for every woman. And then the midwives, it's normally two midwives that will work on the ward and like one support worker. Then the midwives will decide who is going to look after what women and they'll go and make their introductions, make their way around the ward um, and we'll just kind of say like who we are, congratulate them for their like new baby and just basically go in there, say what's going to happen for the day. Um, so we do mum and baby checks So and it's basically a head to toe. So we ask the woman how she's doing emotionally and how her appetite is, how her sleep's been going. Um, we then ask about her breasts. So do they feel sore? Do they feel hot? Are they engorged? How do her nipples feel? Are they sore as well? Um, we check her uterus is contracted. And then if she had a cesarean, we'll have a look at the wound and check that there's no signs of infection and that it's healing properly and maybe discuss in taking the dressing off. We'll then ask about her bleeding. So how heavy is it? Is she passing any clots? Making sure she's not soaking through pads. Then we'll ask if she's passed urine and if she's been able to open her bowels yet. How her legs are feeling. So um, if she's had like a cesarean, if she's got um, high risk factors for a blood clot or anything like that, um, she should be wearing the compression socks. So we check that they're on and we check that there's no like swelling in her legs um, or hot spots, things like that. Then we just basically ask if she's got any questions and then we just go on to do her observations. So we, we check her blood pressure, her pulse, her oxygen saturations. Um, we check her breathing rate and her temperature. And then if she's got like a question about like if, Say, for example, if she's had a tear or an episiotomy and it's been sutured, she might be saying that that's quite uncomfortable and we'll just have a look if she consents to it just to see that there's no signs of infection um, around the perineum or around the vagina and things. So, so yeah, we, we just do that and then we go on to checking baby. So we'll strip baby and make sure that they're a good colour, so making sure they don't look like jaundice. Uh, that their skin is clear so there's no like spots or rashes. We check that their tone is good so they're not like floppy. But checking that the cord is on, that it's secure and there's no like swelling or redness around their like belly button. We check their eyes to make sure they're not like gunky. Uh, we check their mouth as well. We check um, if baby's had a wee or a poo and we're very like observant on it. So we'll be like, okay, what colour was it? <laughs> And how many times has baby weed today? How many times has baby pooed today? Because they're all really important information. Then we check the feeding. So we're asking how many times has baby been fed uh, in the last 24 hours? How long baby had fed for? And how many meals baby was having? If it was like formula or colostrum. And then we do baby's observations. So it can depend. Like if it's a low risk baby, you might not have to do any observations, but if this baby has higher risk factors, for example, if they need to be on antibiotics or if there was um, meconium at the labour or anything like that, then we'll check their temperature, 
their heart rate and their breathing as well. Um, and a really important observation to make for babies anyway is just looking at their breathing to see if they're struggling. So if you can see any like abdominal recession, so like it looks like their tummy's getting sucked in really hard to breathe, it shows that they're trying to make that extra effort. If there's any nasal flaring for breathing as well, or if they just sound like they're struggling to breathe, they'll make like a grunting noise. So it's just about being observant for things like that. And that was something I didn't know for quite a long time, to be honest. Um, so it's just as a handy little tip. So once you have done that for all of your women and you're making sure that they're comfortable, you'll probably be like so far behind on your notes because you'll have to document everything that you've said to the woman and that you've checked and checked for baby as well. So. I think postnatal ward is like the worst for documentation because there's just so much of it. And if you're going round to say like six, if you've got like six ladies to care for and their babies, it can get like quite a backlog for the notes. Um, so it's just about like having a notepad with you, writing down their observations and any like specific information, like they need a doctor's review or query infection or something like that just to remind yourself when you come to do the notes like a few hours later because you should do them immediately but it's just not always feasible. So then other kind of things you'll do during the day is breastfeeding support um, or it could just be feeding support with like bottle feeding or um, demonstrating to the woman how to use the breast pump uh, or hand expressing. So there's lots of different things you can be doing if you get the time to do it. You'll also take uh, catheters out of the mums if they've had like a section, if they had an epidural during labour. A lot of different things will mean that they'll have to have a, a urinary catheter. So you'll just remove that. And once that's been removed, they need to do um, two wees uh, within six hours. And it needs to be like a quite a substantial amount as well. Like it can't just be a little bit. So they have to get that measured. So you'll go and measure the, the urine. If babies are still there on day three, you'll weigh them. And if they, babies are still there on day five, you'll do their newborn blood spot as well. But normally by day five, a lot of them will have gone. It's just that sometimes if they have quite a long course of antibiotics, they'll be there a little bit longer. You'll be discussing like the care plans with doctors, or if a situation has rose, you'll give like a handover of that problem to them. You'll be giving the medication to mums and babies. So there's normally, I think there's like one drugs round per shift, but you'll probably find that like sometimes um, women will need like medications throughout the day anyway. So, but you'll do like one main drug round for the mums and one main drug round for the babies. So certain things that you might come across on the postnatal ward, um, it can vary and depending on the risk because for quite a few weeks of my second year I was on quite a high risk uh, postnatal ward for babies so I encountered quite a bit of like babies dropping their temperature quite a lot so we're either having to encourage skin to skin with mum for an hour or like if that's not worked or if they don't want to do it then putting the babies on the resuscitator under the heater for a while and just monitoring their temperature and like informing the paediatric SHOs and stuff like that about it. You might come across infections. So it could just be through like observations that you've noticed like the temperature has risen or it could be that um, you've had a look at someone's um, like perineum and at their tear and it's getting a bit gunky and a foul smell. You might encounter jaundice. It's probably quite common that you'll encounter jaundice. So it's just about being aware of like the signs of it and what to look out for. And baby's just not feeding. Like this is the thing that is so frustrating because like you could try for so long um, like to sit with this woman and help her breastfeed and she's doing everything she possibly can and baby could be in a perfect position but they just don't want to feed um, or sometimes it could be that baby's struggling to feed and you're having to think like okay how long is it safe to go until we have to potentially give like a top up of something else so that can be quite a touchy topic with some parents but it just depends on each situation of what's the best route to go down and um, you might encounter like engorgement so a lot of the women well most women will find that their milk comes in around day three 
so and it can be a bit later if they had like an instrumental or like a c-section especially um they will feel like very full the breasts will um around that day and over the next couple of days so depending on how well they're feeding baby and how frequently they might get really engorged so it's just about like understanding how to relieve them symptoms for the woman and talking about um like doing some expressing and then just like abnormal observations like you could just see that a baby's got quite high respiration rate or that mum's got like a really high pulse and you're thinking okay like has she drank enough today so these are things that you will pick up over time and just it, you'll ask your midwife a few times like okay like what what could this be and then all of a sudden like it it will just click one thing i definitely will say is that it can be really stressful at the start if you're trying to listen to baby's heart rate because it is literally like, duh, 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 like it's so fast and it sounds so silly because you think well you just count it but honestly like it's it's so difficult i know i found it really difficult anyway and i know a lot of other people did but i just want you to know that like it's absolutely fine to, for it to be difficult. And some people click with it after a few goes, but if you're like me, it took a really, really, really long time to just be able to hear it. It's just about being safe and honest. If you don't know, then don't assume because it's quite a big thing. And you'll find as well that like, especially with babies, they'll, they'll go through periods of being like a bit sleepy and then a bit excited, like throughout the whole minute. Um, and especially with their respirations, like I would always say count the respirations for a whole minute because they they take like pauses sometimes, um, not like to a stage of like apnea, but they will just like hold their breath for a little bit longer and then like do a few like <laughs> afterwards. So I think like just always count for the full minute, especially when you're still learning like how to do it very well, because yeah, you just don't want to miss things that could come up um but yeah like I say it can be very busy but you will learn so much just try and note everything down in your notepad that you're gonna need to do for the documentation anything that just kind of like springs you on to oh yeah she said that this was actually a problem or that was absolutely fine so yeah like that is the biggest piece of advice because I promise you you will forget because you will just go and see so many women or you'll think I'll do that in a second and you'll get the call bell pressed and you're off somewhere else and it can just be a bit chaotic but I'm sure you'll absolutely love your postnatal ward placement. Um, so I hope this video has been useful because I know that when you're an aspiring student midwife and you've never been in like a maternity area before it's really difficult to know like what actually happens on the postnatal ward other than there's, there's mum and babies there. <laughs> so I hope that's kind of shown the structure of the postnatal ward a little bit and just what you could expect to do. It might not be as crazy as this, it might be just as crazy, like it depends on the trust and what kind of um, postnatal ward like risk yours has. Because um, I know some hospitals will just have one postnatal ward for the whole hospital and you've got high and low risk mix there and some separate it, so yeah. But it's all really good experience, so yeah. I really hope you enjoyed it and if you did like I say please hit that like button and um, follow my midwifery Instagram account Ellis Jenny to midwifery for a lot more like regular updates and content and hit the subscribe button as well to see more content of mine thank you so much and have a great day